Welcome everyone back to the miniature podcast known as Miniatures of the Multiverse. I am your host Tim of the Late Night Players, joined as always by my brother Rob. Hi. And my lovely sister Shauna. What up, what up? How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Couldn't Fantastic. be better. It's a great day in the neighborhood, y'all. It really is. You guys got you guys live in a really nice neighborhood, so it's always not or it could be wrong and there's secretly a uh, Stefford Wives situation going on. Yeah, it's Ripley. Yeah, I walked in, saw Ripley laying on Rob's stomach. I thought it was an alien chest burster. Yeah. She is. For yeah. context, Ripley is our bearded dragon, but she is better than all of you. I'm so sorry. I will I will link her Facebook page in the show notes. Is it Facebook or do you Instagram? Instagram. Sorry, Instagram page. She, ha- she has an Instagram page dedicated to all of her lovely, lovely goings. So, what has everybody been up to lately, Rob? Nothing. I've been in a whale of sadness. But I've been painting minis. I'm oh. currently painting some Thousand Suns and Slanet right now. Literally, as we're talking. Ooh, call out some of the paints that you're using. Yes, it looks like you're using new paints. Um, I am using a mix of Army Painters. Okay. Pro Krill and the new Army Paint, or War Paints Fanatic. I've got Death Metal... Hold on, I've got some others here. I'm trying to remember where all my new ones are. Oh, lens glare or lens flare glow. Uh, Which is like a really neon yellow green. Yes. Oh, I've got fresh rust, rough iron, and oozing vomit. How, Those are the ones I'm working with right now. How are you liking the new War Paint Fanatics? I, I like them. I like them. Uh, I love my metallic, so death metal and rough iron are great. Um, I don't, I haven't gotten to do oozing vomit yet. I'll probably put down something tonight. That death metal is really nice. It's like a shiny metallic black. Yes, it's very good. Yeah, I kind of would paint everything in this house shiny black. Yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> After seeing that. Definitely, definitely recommend. So how are you liking the new War Paint Fanatics? I know they sent us the uh, 50 count starter pack and I've been having fun with them so far. You hesitated. No, there was no hesitation. I was trying to think of how to award myself because they, they were kind enough to send us the box. I've been using them exclusively on my uh, I guess you call them Synthwave Space Marines. Yeah, they look really good. Very yeah. bright, vibrant, pinkish and purples. Do you have an Instagram? Well, the Late Night Players has an Instagram, yes, and they are on there. there yeah, there you go. So you can see the progress and see what they look like in real time. Yeah, you just gotta stick up on that, you know, keep up on it. Well, I I started really going ham on them because, uh, what's the channel? Uh, on tabletop I was doing a spring clean challenge, and I was like, well, why don't I try to do those as for the challenge? Plus, also test out the new paints. There you go. Yeah, uh, the army painter stuff's really good. I do some Citadel paints, but. It's in pro acrylics, but uh, I'm really digging these fanatics. I really and, like the. Uh, send me some. I really like the uh, turbo dork stuff too. I turbo love that cr- chroma shift. That's yeah. nothing against you know army painting or anything like that. It's just they don't have anything. Well, it's nice because you can use different stuff. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got two or three of their favorites from across multiple paint lines. I know my go-to brown is uh, the hardened leather speed paint. I think that's the best brown I've ever used. But my go-to white is titanium white from Prolacryl. That is the first one I spilled, is the leather one. No, you spilled, um... I thought it was brown. No, you spilled... I thought it was a Citadel paint that you spilled. It was. Because oh, no, it was the, the no, no, oil. oil. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. got it right here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Because it is... It's still it, messy. It's a fact that you're not a true hobbyist until you've spilled at least one bottle of something Citadel. Because of the I way thought it was until you drink your paint water. Well, it's that or spill. One of the two. I'll take that for 500 please. Yeah, okay. no drinking. I have painted exactly one mini, so now I am professional. What mini did you paint, Shauna? Uh, a little Space Marine, right? Oh, that's right. The Golden Boy for uh, Gaming Guild's contest last, last year. Yep. Yep. Ooh. Have you done anything recently hobby-wise, Shauna? Uh, right now I'm on my uh, iPad 
doing some artwork. But, Yay! Yeah. We are not going to discuss what the artwork is for. Nope, it's a surprise. It's a surprise. So, obviously we've been away for a while, both on here and with our Reliquary Tower podcast. But I figure, fresh start, we'll just, this is the official kickoff of season, technically this is the kickoff of season one of Miniatures of Multiverse. The previous episode would have been our episode zero, or pilot episode, where I made a bunch of predictions of stuff I wanted to do. Six months in to the year, are we six months in? Yeah. yeah. Six months into the year, I have done zero of those things. Yay. Rob, have you completed any of your... I can't remember what my word has been so long. Yep. Um, I definitely am not going to have anything ready for Gen Con. So I know I wanted to get something done for Gen Con, but I am getting paint on minis. You, well, you're also trying to paint three different armies at one time. You're trying yeah, to do... You're trying to do your Slanesh army. You're trying to do your Thousand Suns army. And now you guys have gotten into... Age of Sigmar, and you're... Why are we doing Night Haunts? Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm in Age of Sigmar more I just like the models. But it is a very specific army, so if I ever do playing by against Age of Sigmar, I'll have something. Until all that goes away. We just found a really good deal on it. and It was pretty, and he liked it, so... Hey. My Warhammer mommy took care of me. Oh. That's what you should tell everybody about. What? You don't remember what happened that day? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Story. Oh, you don't want that. It'll be out in public. Okay, yeah. Um, so, Shauna refers to herself as my Warhammer mommy because she buys me Warhammer. So we went to a card show where there was a guy selling cheap Warhammer. And, I mean, it was like, it was pretty like half-off models and stuff. He was just trying to get out of it. New in box. So, yeah, because it was a mixture. Yeah, I remember that. It was a mixture of a little bit of older stuff, but then there was some brand new stuff, too. Yeah. So, Shauna buys for me, and I call her my Warhammer mommy, obviously. We're with Tim and our mom, and my mom's like, Oh, I'll be your Warhammer mommy, Tim. I'm like, nope, that is not the, way, nope, not the <laughs> right way to use that. It's very uncomfortable, very quick. Yeah, we had to learn her some stuff that day. She's a fast learner. But I did end up with a couple of really cool tiered in models. But if I'm not mistaken, the Night Haunts weren't from that day. No, they were from... We got oh, yeah, well was. beforehand, but there's where like a lot of them came from. Oh, yeah, you got the single model, the really big, the pain in the ass one to put together. I forget its name. Yeah. yeah. Ah, that's not a good so one. So, my goals were to have an army in every game that we play painted. That's obviously... A lofty goal. I wanted to enter three painting competitions this year, which I, I still am not for sure what I'm entering for Gen Con. I haven't narrowed down to four or five pieces, two of which I'd have to start yesterday to hopefully have them done in time. You got all day tomorrow or all day Wednesday? Yeah, work. Yay. But I have been thinking, so there was a painter, I was listening to him in another podcast, he went to Adepticon this past year, or this year. And of course, Adepticon's moving to Milwaukee next year. But they have four. Where was that for? What? Where was that for? Uh, in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Chicago! But. I wanted to go to Milwaukee, so. Yeah. They have four major painting competitions at Adepticon. You have the Golden Demon, which is Warhammer specific, you have Crystal Brush. Which is, um, or is it just Creature Caster now? Well, it uses Creature Caster miniatures. You have Creature Caster miniatures or Parabellum Conquest miniatures. Then you I forget the third one, but then there's also Path of the Worthy, with it, which is uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol. And he entered all four to see how well he could place. Okay. I think I want to do something like that. I want to try to have four different models, four different ranges. Get them in the painting competition. Do it. Do it. Do it. But I also okay. have to go to Milwaukee. So? Milwaukee. We're not that far. Mm. Well, it's farther than California. Or California. No, it's not. Farther than Chicago. Okay. It's an hour distant. It's an hour farther. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so. 
Well, yeah, that means that there's an hour of different restaurants. There you go. Mm-hmm. So we're at uh, Wisconsin? Yeah, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So while Rob's looking that up, we're going to kind of de- slide into the video's main topic, or the video, the podcast main topic. Sorry, I'm a little rusty. <laughs> it's a yeah. slide. Slide. Um, yeah, it's an hour past Wisconsin. So, speaking of Age of Sigmar, they just announced Age of Sigmar 4th edition coming out. It is 24 Stormlord, uh, Stormcast Eternals, 50 Skaven, some terrain, the rule book, everything like that. We don't officially know the price yet, but based on giveaway details, it looks to be about $275 US. I think that's a little pricey for a starter, and it made me start thinking of other games that had some really good starters and some really bad starters. And since we're starting a brand new season of the podcast, I wanted to talk about when getting into miniature war games, how important is a starter set? Because obviously it's how you get into it. But, Roberto. Yes. Have you ever seen a miniature game with a starter set that you thought was the perfect starter set to get into? Hero Clicks. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, hey, that's not too far off. Um, I like the Crisis Protocol box, but I also don't appreciate how they remake the same box with different miniatures and slightly different figures and call it, like, Part 2. Are you talking about the Earth's Mightiest box where it's yeah. essentially... Okay. So for those that don't know, when Marvel Crisis Protocol came out in 2019, it came with... What, 10 miniatures and a bunch of terrain. Mm-hmm. Now, five year, five-ish years later, they released the new box. Almost all the miniatures are the exact same, except I believe they swapped out a couple for Bucky. I forgot who in the villain side. But for the most part, it's the same characters, just new sculpts, new cards, and new set of terrain. So you're not a fan of that, even though it's been five years? I don't think so. Because at that point, why not just release a new starter set with different characters, and then you're going to be more likely to get new players and old players want to buy it. Yeah, but since they're new characters, technically they are new characters, because it's new variations of the characters. I, I don't know. I'm not, if I'm playing that game and I've got the starter set... I'm not looking like, oh, hey, new versions of these exact same characters that I have. That's something I want. I want more of the same. Even though they have different abilities, different stuff like that, different skulls, it just feels the same. Because I want to play with somebody different than Captain Marvel again. Why not the male Captain Marvel? Captain okay. Marvel or something like that. You got Wolverine, okay, why not... Uh, Wolverine's not starter. Well, I'm just saying, if Wolverine was in it, why not um, X-23. Daphne Keene? Or, no, that's the actress of later. Laura <laughs> uh, the, the Kinney. Laura Kinney, there you go. If I'm playing with... Like, there's just different variations. Why can't you do that? Iron Man, okay? How about Iron Heart? Iron Heart would be a fun model. I just think it's kind of silly. But that's just me. I do like the Leviathan box. I thought that was good. The life inbox was was really solid. It's not that much different from the Age of Sigmar box. In terms of miniature count. You don't like that one, definitely. No. Okay. So here here's my thing when it comes to a miniature starter. Maybe this is where how I should have began. You have three different kinds well ten okay, hold on. Let me tr- gather my thoughts here for a moment. Technically speaking, the Leviathan box and the Age of, S- S- uh, Sigmar. Age of Sigmar 4th Edition Skaven Tide box are not starter boxes. Those are not considered starter sets. They are limited edition two-player faction boxes. Hmm. Because Games Workshop puts out a set of three separate starter sets. There's the basic starter, the premium starter, and the ultimate starter. Because if you go to Warhammer 40k two-player starter box, 
there's the starter box. It's the top one is two hundred ten dollars. It comes with the Space Marine Combat Patrol, the Tyranid Combat Patrol, a board, a double sided board, and a bunch of a handful of terrain. Ah, well, then I stand corrected. You want to throw out some starters for me so I know what I'm talking about? Then? <laughs> okay. Um, oh, uh, what about the Batman Manager game? There's, there's a good that's, one. That's a decent starter. That's one that we reviewed and loved absolutely because it came with. So a typical game of Batman is 350 rep or points a piece. Each one of the starters came with just shy of 300 points. Plus, if you got the deluxe starter, it came with all kinds of papercraft terrain. If you didn't get that one, you just didn't get any terrain. But almost a full army, and it encouraged you to go out and buy more. So, well, Leviathan is not a starter. Technically, no. So, a starter for Warhammer. What's a army point value? Uh, so, Warhammer is generally played in 1,000 points, 2,000 points, and 3,000 points. How much does a starter come? A starter comes with just over 500 points, I think. Okay, so how much does Leviathan come with? Leviathan came with like 1,200 points each. So, so technically, yes, the Leviathan box is... More of a starter than a starter. Yes, but a starter set should be something that gets the people into the game playing. The Leviathan boxes aren't going to be around forever, but the starters will be around the entire length of the edition. So you can get started, but you can't realistically go play a game. At a store or something. No, they come with the Combat Patrol, so you can play Combat Patrol out of the box with them, learn the game, and then that encourages you to go buy your next 500 points to be able to play a 1,000-point game. Okay, well, in that, in that argument, I think the starters aren't bad for Warhammer. I just think, how much is the starter? $210. For one army. Like for two. One, so, two player starter. Yes. So for another forty dollars, you could have gotten a Leviathan box and gotten a lot more. A lot more. Yes, but the Leviathan box isn't going to be available. Uh, technically, it's not in print anymore. Yes, there are still stores that you can find it at, but it won't be around the entire length. But of it's a better starting point. It is, but they don't market it as the starting point. But they should. They should. Yes, I'm not disagreeing, but they don't because they don't keep it around. That's stupid. Crisis Protocols box has been around for five years. The, the, the original one. Or short, just a little bit less than five years. That starter box has been there for the entire length of the game. It has been the go-to entry point for anybody. Because, yes, if you don't like the characters, it kind of feels bad. But it has all that terrain. Well, no, has, no, I think the base starting set is good. I don't like the fact that they're remarketing the same characters, changing them a little bit, and calling it a brand new starter box. But it is a brand new starter box. It's all new tactic cards, new characters, new powers. Not new characters. Yes, new characters. It's, it's not the same Spider-Man, because now it's we're on our fourth Peter Parker. Third Peter Parker. Fourth Peter Parker. Third Peter Parker. But it's still Spider-Man. It's still Peter Parker Spider-Man. Yes. Okay. Thematically, I want a new character. Ben Riley Spider-Man. Which he's out now. That's fine. It's fine. Is it just one Ben Riley? Yes. Well, crap, we're already on our third fucking Peter Parker. Why not put a second Ben Riley? Why? I, I just. Look, you're asking my opinion. Don't argue with me. Well, that's, that's what creates good back and forth. Banter. Banter. Ban <sighs> okay, what well, about the Shadow Point starter? Looks good. So it's more expen it was more expensive than. The Crisis Protocol starter. But you got two full teams that if, somebody, if you and a friend wanted to go in half on, one could take the dark side, one could take the light side. You actually have two full forces. Yeah, I like that one. That, that was a fun game. I feel like I enjoy that more than I enjoy Crisis Protocol. I think your problem with Crisis Protocol is since it's all abstract, height, everything's just looked down from top down, it's very hero clicksy in, in that sense. Yeah, it's not on a grid. But elevation only matters in the abstract. I don't care for purely objective-based miniature games. I like shooters, or like uh, combat ones. So, yeah, I don't know. 
I think that's Crisis Protocol felt very much like a. Was there even a, a deathmatch type? I mean, you could play. We we played a couple games where it was just we ignored the objectives and just last man standing. Because remember the big six foot. Yeah, at that, that point with Marvel, we might as well play Airbooks. Yeah, I guess. But the miniatures are bigger, nicer. They are. I feel like Shatterpoint was more of that. Warhammer's definitely more of that for me. Yeah, they, 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 Warhammer's very objective based. Forgot to tell you, I found Thanos' head. Did you really? Yes, it was stuck to the Pokemon tin. Uh, the magnet. You it's magnet a magnet. It's a magnet. That is Sorry. awesome. Sorry, nice. forgot Same. all about it. High five. So uh, when when Thanos, real fast about that, when Thanos came out, I got me and Rob both one, and I thought, you know what, this will be the perfect model to f- try magnetizing for the first time. This came with so many options. Yeah. So I magnetized the heads and the arms, and also magnetized the feet. So you can change from the bases. And we've been looking for his other... One of his heads got Since misplaced. Since we the Yeah, got misplaced over two years ago. That is awesome. Apparently it was attached to a... Pokemon tin. I love it. Um, that's perfect. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Um, now, I will say, uh, talking about one real quick, that seems kind of interesting. The Halo Major game. Yes. Because... That having objectives makes sense since you're basically playing. Which I think so far they've said yeah. King of the Hill. I heard Capture the Flag. Capture the Flag. Mm-hmm. Capture the Flag. Yeah. That was That's always fun. my favorite. Um, I, I know they said like four different modes. I know there's just basic brawl where you can just go out and fight. Yeah. Which is fun because that makes sense to me. Um, let's see here. What does it say? Oh, no. I'm worried about it. I can't get the... The Master Sheet. Edition. What? Can't get the Spartan Edition anymore. Yeah, it was on pre-order. Dang. I wouldn't like that. I didn't realize it was already pre-ordered. Um, let's see here. I don't really see what the ones are. But anyways. Yeah. Um, good one. Mm-hmm. That's such a bold prediction. What? Polygon says it'll take on Warhammer 40k. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So when it comes to Warhammer, somebody pointed out this to me a little while back, and I, I take it to heart. There's the miniature game hobby, and then there's the Warhammer hobby. They are both, while they are very similar, they are two separate things. Okay. And. I think I think to say anything if anything is going to compete with Warhammer, that's a little bit of a tangent. I think Steamforge Games having War Machine now will be the competition because there was a point in 2012 2013 where Games Workshop had upset enough people that they went to War Machine instead, and it became a good rival. Now, whether we'll see that again, don't know. But heck, later in the year, they're evidently coming out with a new starter for uh, Warhammer, or Warhammer, War Machine, that's going to be all plastic models. It's going to have terrain. It's going to be two factions, which I'm hoping will be a much better entry point because the start collecting faction boxes that they put out are so expensive. How much? They're $200 a piece. And you don't get a full I, army. I feel like sometimes you forget how people, how much people around you spent for you to get a not starter starter box. And you're over here judging <coughs> other people for having ones that are a little expensive. Well, no, I'm just... Crap, you're sitting here over saying like, oh, $210 for a starter for Warhammer is okay. You don't get a full faction. I never said that was okay. Mainly because the you two... You said it was okay because they're around. Apparently, you just have to be a good, like, a good father. A good divorcee dad to be a good starter. You don't have to always be there, but you have to show up in stock sometimes. <laughs> I, I say the end-all, be-all, absolute best starter set I have ever seen for a game is Star Wars Shadowpoint. 
Really? The amount of terrain that you get, you get two full factions. Okay. I think that's the, the only thing that that game that would keep that keeps oh, it from being perfect. That I think would be amazing is if it had some kind of fold out paper mat. Because a lot of these games, they don't think about that. As if I'm just okay, this should be a Christmas morning a morning test. Have you ever heard of that? What Curly really talked about. Do you have the batteries? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's right. That's where we got it from. Was from work and retail. So Christmas morning test. If I open up a present on Christmas morning, I should be able to open it out of the box, start playing with it. Now, given that we still have to put the miniatures together, I'm understandable, but a lot of starter sets you can put the miniatures together in a morning and an afternoon and be playing by that night. It should have everything in a box that if I've got it put together, I can sit down and play. And unfortunately, most starter sets don't have that. Well, actually, I lie. The Infinity starters do. Because they come with a play mat, train, and a miniature. But they're metal, and I hate metal miniatures. They're such a bitch to put together. But Star Wars Shadowpoint would be the perfect game if it came with a little 4x4 double-sided paper mat. One side could be desert, one side could be snow. Yeah, but can't you buy that separately? Well, you can buy neoprene mats like I've got, but that's another $50 that most people don't think about or know about when they first get into the hobby. Well, but if you've got terrain, you don't really need a mat. No, you just gotta measure out a spot on the table, lay some cloth down, whatever. You have to lay cloth down, honestly. Hey, yeah, look, it's a preference. A table. You got a brown table. That's a desert right there. I just... I, said, I will say, I do enjoy Shatterpoint. If you put Ripley on it, then you would have some vegetation. You'd have a Sarlacc pit. True. She'll eat the miniatures. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like it, so that's good. That's fair. I could say that that would be a perfect starter. The Arkham starters, or the Batman Miniature Game starters, would probably be a close second, in my opinion, of a good starter, because it comes with enough miniatures to have almost a full army, but is very terrain heavy and does not come with any terrain. And you need terrain for the Batman game. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other starters that I've gotten for us that I can't... Conquest? Conquest is a, a solid starter. It comes with pretty much half the army that you need. But again, it's a massive, massive game that requires some terrain. Yeah, but also you're forgetting the fact that people who are wanting to get into miniatures are usually board gamers that want something more. So they're already kind of exposed to the world of gaming. Like, nobody starts off by being like, oh yeah, I'm going to go do a Warhammer. No, it's usually like, oh hey, I'm going to like... That's fair. So they don't start... get into. Yeah, so it's like you start off with like, oh yeah, this Monopoly game, and then you... It's it's a you slippery say, slope. You, you say that, but watch when Harry Cavill's Warhammer shows start coming out and people start. Well, that's different. They're being exposed to Snacky Cavill. Yeah. Cause yeah, Modifius, I would buy whatever he's selling. Modifius said that they saw a huge upsell in the uh, Fallout RPG and miniature game stuff just because of that. I didn't know Fallout was still doing a miniature game, still making content. So they have the larger game, which is uh, Wasteland Warfare, and then they have a new one that they just launched, uh, which is a more miniature skirmish game where you and your uh, friends are fighting over Nuka-Cola Land. Uh-huh. So it's much smaller in scale. It's, I don't think there are any real named characters for it. It's just supposed to be like the gangs. Like there's the Vault Dwellers, uh, some mutants... Isn't that what an episode of Spongebob was? Is like, Gloveland instead of Nuka Cola Land? Did they just steal Spongebob stuff? Yeah. Okay, fair. Probably. I mean, Spongebob has been around long enough. Yeah. It's still on, I think. So. Looks like all three of us have very different opinions on what a good starter. I never told you what mine was. So well, what's yours? Yeah, never... I guess it depends on if you count this as many. Because they're not very many. What? I think Funkoverse is a perfect starter. Because you can pick out your license. You know, like there's Universal Monster, there's 
Batman, there's Marvel. You can play everything out of the box. It has a double-sided mat. Sucka! <laughs> Actually, it's cardboard. So it's, not, it has, it's already pre-measured. You can use them as display pieces. You don't have to paint them. You don't have to put them together. I think you have to put a stand on them, and that's it. Sadly, that is a really good starter. Yes. And, and they have chase variants, so you can look for that. So then, you know, you can up your game if you want. You don't have to. There's, like, the thrill of the hunt type thing. And who doesn't want to see the Golden Girls go against the Bride of Frankenstein? I mean, you so can mix and match. Funko versus the Ultimate Miniature Game. Hmm. Pretty good time. That's... But they did make a Space GM one, so, you know, they can't all be winners. That is uh, questions to be answered. So I gotta think about it. Is Funkoverse even still go? I there think. new content for that in forever. I haven't either, but there are so many ways you could mix and match it that you really could, like, theoretically play something different over and over. Well, now that the former head of Watsy's now in charge of Funko's game division... I'd expect you guys to be seeing all kinds of premium Funkoverse stuff, a Funkoverse secret layer kind of thing. Oh, that just scares me. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. I did like that game. All right. We're, we're about half an hour or so after I edit out the silence bits, if there are any. I don't know. <laughs> you got anything else to say on starters? Nope, Shauna owned us all. Yeah, I think she did. Take that, nerds. <laughs> and you mean that lovingly, of course. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Rob and Shauna, if anybody wants to find you, where can they find you guys? Man, I don't know anymore. <laughs> Horror movie horrors when we start getting it back up, but I feel like we just always have something going on and mm-hmm. can never get to it. Uh, actually, if you have you guys seen uh, the Hulk? Yeah. You know, we're basically the Hulk walking down the side of the oh, road. Oh, sad Bruce Banner music playing. Yep, that's us. Backpack full of horror movies and stuff, and mm-hmm. nothing to play them on. You just yep. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, they they called us for seven days, and even Samara was like, mm, "Yeah, here you go." <laughs> I mean, you guys are kind of technically already dead, so. Yeah, we work in corporate jobs, so yes. All right. And of course, you can find Late Night Players at all the show link notes below, so... Make sure to check out his fresh paint. Yeah. And also find Shauna at... Um, Random Acts of Extra. And uh, you can see Bearded Dragon shenanigans at Ripley the Beardy. Which I'll link both two of them as well. And if you don't hear from us beforehand, we'll be at Gen Con the first weekend of August... I'll be working. Rob will be behind the counter somewhere as a new... Deputy. Deputy. As always, remember to keep your dice warm and happy gaming.